Today in motorsport, the pre-season bullshit continues its bullshit circus to a bullshit audience. I attempt to talk about another motorsport that I completely missed out on and probably fuck up in the process. And Connor Daly wins the IndyCar fan vote. How the fuck did that happen? All in a jam-packed episode of Unsafe Press Release, your unreliable source for racing news. In the world of Formula One, we were treated to the second re... Mm, fucked up already. In the world of Formula One, we were treated to the second week of the F1 preseason testing, which is vastly different from the first week of testing because almost all of the snow that plagued the first week of testing was completely gone for the second test. All except for Snowtope, I hope. Can someone check on Snowtope, please? I'm kind of worried. I hope they didn't just sort of melt him in his sleep. <laughs> the first test had a lot of cars and drivers putting more green slime on their cars than any episode of Get Your Own Back combined, as well as using those weird grill thingies they use for aero testing. If you're gonna have a go at F1 being not that aesthetically pleasing, just be happy that we don't have these things all the time. For the first day, the fastest time was set by the only person in Ferrari who isn't a twat, Sebastian Vettel, with Valtteri second the best Bottas, taking second, because he's the best, the third, being the one with the hairy chest, is almost an oxymoron because that place was being taken by Max for Twatten, who couldn't grow facial hair even if it slapped him in the face and called him daddy. But he managed to top the speed trap standings instead, and considering first the worst, it's easy to find out that Max Verstappen is the worst. Max Verstappen is shit. Max Verstappen is awful, Max Verstappen is the worst driver, and anyone who defends him is an arsehole. In more important news, Tatiana Calderon became Sauber's official test driver, while Carmen Jorda said that women drivers should root for driving in Formula E because, quote, it's not that challenging, unquote. Which is not only insulting to the physical capabilities of those drivers, but also Formula E drivers as well. And Lena Gade went to Twitter, like almost every other notable female racing driver, to absolutely roast the living shit out of her in the process. So that was fun to watch in a way. During the second day of testing, it was the Red Bull car of Raniel de Carda who took the top spot on the second day, followed by the two Mercedes drivers, Sebastian Vettel, current Le Mans champion Brendan seriously better than Hulkenberg Hartley, and Fernando Alonso rounding out the top six, despite the occasional moment here and there, but you know, nobody cares anymore. The third day of testing was the day that Scuderia Ferrari could let their hair down. And they did by pushing Vettel on hypersofts and letting him go absolutely wild. Not only putting the fastest time of the day, but absolutely smashing the unofficial lap record in the process with a 117.182. Well, Magnussen put the second fastest time with the supersofts, while third to seventh were all done with the hypersoft tyres. But to make sure that everyone is put down to earth, eight to ninth were the Mercedes, who were only two seconds behind on medium tyres. So as much as everyone really wants to see Ferrari get the fastest times and the race wins later in the season, it's probably not going to happen. Again, I hope I get proven wrong. Kinda. Bottas is still a Mercedes. But, the one thing we can absolutely make fun of without any responses from any smart people is that Max Verstappen is in 12th, Max Verstappen is shit, and anyone who defends him is an idiot. <laughs> lol. And on the final day of testing, Kimi, it's not that big of a deal, he has an Instagram, Raikkonen, managed to top the timing sheets, but nobody gives a shit because IndyCar's on this week, or last week, depending on when this comes out. Yeah. IndyCar is happening sometime soon, after once again being subjected to the most ridiculously long off-season in motorsports history, but the World Endurance Championship will probably surpass that soon. So let's run down a few cool little things that are happening this season. Firstly, and the most recent news happening so far in the season as I'm talking about this, Connor Daly has bagged himself a seat for this year's Indianapolis 500, after being drafted out of a seat at the end of last year's season. So, if he manages to fool us all and win the race when the time comes, not only will my 2017 Indy 500 review age like milk, but it will also make me look like a giant arsehole. Not that it hasn't made me look like a giant arsehole. Speaking of Indy 500 visitors, Danica Patrick will be making a long overdue return to the IndyCar series after leaving the sport at the end of the 2011 season to migrate to NASCAR. Unfortunately, this will be the very last race she will ever do, so I hope to God that she does a 2005S display for her last race. 
While that's going on, Lena Gade, ex-Audi Sport LMP1 race engineer and three-time 24 Hours of Le Mans winner, has taken the role as race engineer for Schmidt Peterson Motorsport, being the person who will ultimately rein in James Hinchcliffe and the feeder series master, Robert Wickens. Also joining them as first-time rookies are Indy Light star Matthias Lees, whose first name gives me nightmares, Zachary Clement de Mello, whose name sounds like a children's television show, Pietro Fittipaldi, whom I know nothing about apart from the fact that he's related to Emerson, Jordan King, who is in more seasons of GP2 than any other human being living and breathing, don't take that statistic seriously, I don't know who's been in GP2 the longest, and Rennie Pinter and Kyle Kaiser finishing up the new, 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 new drivers. So who do you think will be this year's champion? Will it be another Penske shit show, or will a different team do the deal? Tell me in the comments. So I can ignore them. And that's about it, I will want to say. Um, I could talk about another mode of sport, but I'm tired and bored like I always am making these UPR videos. So go buy my music on Bandcamp. It's on cjcmusic.bandcamp.com. There will be a, 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 an official Twitter for the CJC uh, brand. Um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, and that's about it. Bye.